guys, so in today's video, I am gonna be showing you guys how I do the tricks I do with the Traxxas Haas. I have people asking me in the comments, how do I do all the tricks that I do? The backflips, the ollie, and things like that. So I'm gonna show all these tricks to you guys. This is kind of like a Haas, uh, a ha I almost says a Haas, <laughs> a Traxxas Haas. <laughs> I combined the two words. <laughs> the all new Haas, <laughs> the Traxxas Haas. I don't even know what I was talking about, what I was saying. I'm gonna show you guys how I do all the tricks that I do with the Traxxas Haas. I think this is a this will be a really good guide for you guys to get you started so you can go out there and have some fun with the Traxxas Haas the way that I do. So I know people are gonna ask, this is about I'm running, just a 5,000 milliamp 3S battery. There we go. So before we get started doing tricks, what you need to do is turn your TSM off. You notice that I have it off right here? And see the front wheels? Now watch this, you turn that TSM up. Just turn it back down. That TSM tries to keep the RC straight. And so whenever you have the TSM up and that front end starts coming off the ground or starts like turning sideways or something like that, the wheels are gonna start turning and you don't want that to happen. So to show you guys why you want that TSM off, if you uh, watch it, <laughs> this kind of, <laughs> this is kind of weird for me to do. <laughs> so when I pull the trigger and it's like this, you see how the front end comes straight up. Now watch, as soon as you turn it, you see how this side over here jumped forward? Now watch, I'm turn the other way, the wheels over there are gonna jump forward. Watch it. You see how it kind of twists? Whenever your wheels are turned, it will cause it to twist side to side. So if you're in the air and your wheels are like this and you start doing a backflip, it's gonna to try to want to corkscrew with you. So you turn the, the TSM off so that way the wheels will stay straight when you're in the air and your flips and everything will stay straight. Now one thing I will do is I will jump and do flips with the TSM on so that it kind of loses control in the air. And it's enjoyable for me to regain control of the RCs when they're in the air. You'll see me do it with the Revo a lot. I turn that TSM up, so when it starts flipping in the air, it'll start turning sideways, things like that, and I'll try to like regain control. It's like a challenge. I don't know. I like the, the challenge aspect of, of regaining control of the RC in the air when I lose control. It's just it's so much fun for me. But when you're learning, <laughs> when you're starting out, like, like learning how to perform tricks, you need to turn that TSM off. So the first little trick I'm going to show you guys is how to drive on two wheels. And uh, you'll see a lot of people like try to do it at low speeds like this, and that's not what you want. You need to do these at high speeds. And also, before I forget, you need to have, uh, okay, so either you need to have lock differentials or a, uh, a really thick fluid in your center differential. Because what people would do is when they get up on two wheels, they'll pull the trigger trying to get speed. But as you can see, the lower wheels, the wheels that are on the ground, they are not turning. And so what they would do is they'll get up on two wheels, they'll pull the trigger, they'll balloon these tires out and blow the tires apart. You don't have any any uh, any um, power going to your wheels on the ground when you have really thin differential fluid or if you don't have uh, a lot differential. So whenever you get up on two wheels, don't just try to like gun it and gain more, more speed. You can't really do that if you have uh, really thin differential fluid. So keep that in mind when you're trying this. So to get up on two wheels, you need to do it with some speed. People try to do it slowly. That's not what you need to do. Let's see. There we go. Now I don't have a lot of space out here, but you need to have a lot of space, a lot of room and more speed than you think you might need. There we go. It's hard to do it in the grass. If you try to do it in the grass, your wheels try to like slide around. And one thing you can do is you can shift the weight. So as you're like coming for the uh, the buildup or whatever, you go to one side and then go to the other side, and then when you when you uh, go to go up on two wheels, it'll shift the weight. What you're doing, is you're throwing the weight side to side is what you're doing. And so once you throw the weight this way, you can throw it back this way and get it to come up on two wheels. So we'll do that one more time. So get plenty of speed. There we go. <laughs> and so it takes some practice, but don't, don't try doing it at low speeds. And if you try to like sit here and try to do it like this, that's not gonna work. So keep that in mind. You gotta have a lot of speed when you're trying it. Don't be afraid of it. <laughs> that's pretty cool. 
But like I said, once those wheels come off the ground, you can't just hold on the throttle and get more speed. Don't, don't do that. It's eventually going to uh, lose all its speed and come back down. All right, one more time. We're going to throw the weight over and throw it over and see if we can get it to go up on two wheels. So there we go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, see, once you start slowing down, it gets it real tipsy like that. Once you start slowing down, it's going to roll over really easy and just like keep on going. It's not going to go up on two wheels. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> now, if you can't get the hang of throwing the weight side to side, you can just do it in a really big arc. So have the turn as a really big arc and you can get it up like that too. So, come back around. So really big arc. There you go. And get it up on two wheels. It just takes practice. Before we start all these tricks with the backflips and things, what you need to remember is every time you land, you don't want to land under power or under brake. If you're landing under power and it stops like this, it jars the drivetrain. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is let off the trigger and then let it land. That's what you want to do. Also, if you're if you're like this and you hit the brake and you do like this, it's going to jar the drivetrain. And that is how I broke the drive shafts. That's how you break differentials. And uh, this doesn't have a slipper clutch or a cush drive to absorb that shock. So I imagine that if you land this thing too many times under power, is going to like tear your drive train apart. I don't know. I know I broke both the front drive shafts and I did that with all those ollies and I know I was not like letting off the brake as I was landing and so that's what did that. So keep in mind every time you land you need to release the trigger just before you hit. The Haas has enough power to do two different types of backflips. You can use the, the ramp to do the backflip or you can do a backflip once you have left the ramp. And what I mean by that is as you come up when you're right here you can gun it and the, 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 the tires on the ramp will start the rotation like this right here. Or what you can do is after you have left and gone into the air, you can pull the trigger and do a backflip. Now that depends on how much room you have from your, from the, how much height you get. <laughs> if you get enough height, you can do it like that. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, this is one off the ramp. So I'm gonna do it kind of slow and low and see. Oh, that was barely. It was barely enough. So that one, I started to backflip on the ramp itself. So. Ooh, like that, right there. All right, now we're going to hit this ramp with a little bit of speed. And once I get into the air, you notice that once I get into the air, I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to pull it all the way. And you have to practice at knowing at when you need to let go of the trigger so that you can get the flip to do right. So uh, what I mean by that here, let's let's get into the air and I'll show you. Let's see him. Oh, that wasn't. I waited too long. I, I was trying to show you and demonstrate, like, so you could clearly see what I'm talking about. And I waited too long. I should have started to flip before, before then. So let's try it again. Well, that. <laughs> Maybe I should edit that out. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Just like that. It takes a feel to know when to let go of the trigger. So once the hoss goes up to the air and it starts spinning, once it gets to a certain point, you release the trigger and then the just the continuation of the uh, rotation is going to spin around. You don't need to keep holding the trigger. Once you get a feel for it, you'll be able to do it pretty consistently. So I... I'll try to point out when I let go of the trigger. I guess I could hold the controller up like this. Let's see. Um, this is <laughs> trying to film it and do this at the same time is kind of kind of more difficult than you think it is. So, let go of the trigger, boom, like that. But you can see I let go of the trigger long before it hits the ground. If you keep holding the trigger, it'll keep rotating and rotate faster. And you don't want that to happen once you get it to the position you need. So it just takes practice. Oh, I hit the brake just before it landed. So as you just saw, I hit the brakes to lower the front end down. If you bring the front end up and you need to bring it back down, you can just hit your brakes 
and it would throw that nose down. So in case you're wondering, you know, how I control it in the air, you know, throttle brake, that's all it is. So if your nose comes up, just hit your brake and it throws it down like that. I guess I'll, I'll do it. I'll let you see exactly what I'm doing. So let's try it. Well, hopefully you can see what it was doing. But I mean, you get you get the point, right? You know, you uh, once you get into the air, you just hit your brake and it will uh, throw the front end down. So off of a small jump like this, it's pretty easy to do a backflip. Just uh, gun it before you hit it. You don't have enough time to, to pull the trigger once it's in the air. You gotta start to flip as soon as you hit that ramp. So, uh, there we go. And I don't know if you can tell, I actually hit the brake before it landed to gain control of it. But yeah, just a small ramp like that, you can do a flip off over the Haas. Right when you hit the ramp, that easy. So one of the tricks I like to do, I don't know if you call it a half flip or what, and people are really impressed by this, and I don't think it's that big of a deal. I'm basically gonna just take it and flip it up like this and then back down. And every time people see it, they're really impressed by it. I don't think it's a big of a deal, but for, I guess if you're not used to seeing RC cars do stuff like this, it's pretty neat, but I don't know. So you just get into the air and you, uh, you pull the trigger and then you uh, hit your brakes. So let's try it again. It's just that that simple and, and some cars like the Evo can just do it like it can be completely upside down and if you get enough, hot, enough height with a hot you can do it too there you go oh i pulled the trigger just before i hit the ground uh, but the trick looked good up to that point right as far as front flips go the way you normally do them with rcs is that you will give them once you start in the air you uh and it's moving like this you hit the brake and then you hit it in reverse and that causes it to do a front flip if you just uh, hit your brake and let it tumble what it's going to start doing it's going to start tilting like this and you'll land on your side on your a-arms you don't want to do that i don't recommend doing front flips they are pretty difficult for people to get the hang of and uh just uh watch what happens when I, when I do this it's going to flip so fast forward so you see how it, how it flipped really fast forward and you started corkscrewing at the same time Front flips are very dangerous to do and they're very hard. Oh, someone, something's going down. Hope everybody's okay. Let's see, uh, but yeah, and if you don't, if you don't put it in reverse, what will happen is this, let's see. You see how I started to, to turn a little bit? So I don't know if you could tell, but I don't recommend doing front flips. The Haas is really small. They're kind of difficult to do, at least like that. But there's a different kind of front flip I'll show you that it may work better with. So this front flip, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna pop a wheelie just before we hit the ramp. So you're going. Oh, <laughs> if I had stayed with it, I would have saved it. Yeah, all you do is right before you hit the ramp. There you go. That was much cleaner than I thought it was gonna look. And so we are gonna let off the trigger a little bit. Once you hit the ramp, you let off the trigger. You do want the wheels to keep spinning, but you don't wanna stay on the throttle or it won't flip right. So as you're coming up, there you go. Oh, that was so smooth and so perfect. You see the rotation of the wheels, when the wheels are rotating, it keeps it straight. If the wheels stop rotating, the RC tries to do this in the air and it causes it to tumble. That's what makes the front flip so difficult to do. But whenever you're doing that front flip off this ramp over here, what's actually causing it to go forward and flip over, it's not the rotation of the wheels, it's the, uh, the rear of the RC hitting against the ramp and throwing it forward. So this is another trick that's kind of difficult to do. And uh, it's very hard to do off a bigger ramp. But off of a smaller ramp or a small little bump, it's not so hard. What I'm going to do is a little backflip corkscrew thing. I don't even know what you call this thing. Uh, I have no idea. Let's see if I can get a couple of them in the out of the way first. And I'll explain what I'm doing. Oh. <laughs> Basically, the way you do that kind of a trick is as you're approaching this, and it gets to about here in reverse you want to turn it 
And so hopefully what happens is as it's turning, the back wheels don't really get too much of a grip on here and the front wheels do like this and it throws the front end around like this right here. Then once it's in the air, you hit your, uh, you, you, uh, since it's going reverse, you, uh, you pull forward to hit your, I guess, forward brakes. But what it, it reverses the wheels. So once it reverses the wheels, it starts into that really violent spin. And then uh, sometimes you can land it, sometimes you cannot. All right, now it's time to teach you guys how to ollie, which people have been, you know, asking me how to do this. So I'm gonna teach you how to do it. And uh, it's not hard. So basically all I'm doing is I'm giving a lot of throttle and it's gonna bring the nose up like this right here. And as it brings the nose up, that wheelie bar causes the rest of the RC to come off the ground. And once it's off the ground, you just hit the brakes. And when you hit the brakes, it throws it forward and it'll land like that. So what you're trying to do is get it. I, I was trying to delay it is what I was trying to do. I wasn't trying to do an ollie just then. I was trying to get you get it to see. But yeah, you can see as it comes up how, how high the front end comes up. So uh, yeah, I wasn't trying to do an ollie just then. I was trying to show you guys how high the front end comes up. But you want to wait for the front end to come up and then hit the brakes. And it'll, it'll hop off the ground like that. So. And so sometimes they're cleaner than other times. That was a real good one right there. So let's, let's see if I can get it in camera view. Let's see. There we go. And so this is real rough on your front, on your front drive shafts though. Remember that, it will break your front drive shafts. Oh, my finger came off the trigger. There we go. So yeah, so you just you just pull the trigger all the way. Then once it's in the air, you hit the brakes. Like that. And you can do it while you're rolling too. So, so. we're gonna see if we can ollie up on this. Let's see. I know I can ollie up on curbs and stuff, so there we go. You can ollie off of it too. See? But yeah, it's just, it's just throttle, brake. It's that easy, that simple. And you kind of get a feel for it. All right, we're gonna ollie over this two by four. And what you do is you get a feel for where it needs to be at. And it seems like to me, about there or a little before there is about where you want to start your ollie at. So this crack, I guess, right here will be our little marker. So yeah, just like that. So once you get a feel for it, you'll know exactly where you need to ollie at. It just takes practice. I, I've done, you know, 200 of these things. So see, I've got the hang of it to where I can ollie pretty consistently. Just get a feel for where it needs to be at. And I can just ollie stuff all day long. So higher stuff uh, takes a little bit more practice. And the thing is, you gotta, you gotta delay your, your brake. You gotta let it come up farther, so. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. It's really difficult to restrain your braking. You've got to purposely delay your brake. Just like that. So, you get a feel for it and you get the hang of it. And then you can ollie all, all over all kind of stuff. So it's just throttle and brake. But you gotta, you gotta work on your timing. You gotta work on your timing. You gotta wait for that front end to come all the way up and then hit your brake and then they'll do that. And remember, this will tear your drive shafts apart. So I guess, I don't know, maybe I did 200 ollies and then the drive shafts came apart. But now I have the steel ones on there and we're gonna see how they hold up. 
All right, guys, well, there you have it. That's how I do all my little tricks. I hope this video helped you guys out. I know some people have a hard time learning tricks and doing things, but uh, this Haas makes tricks pretty easy. It flips so well, it really does. It's small, so it flips fast, and that makes things like front flips kind of difficult to do. That backwards corkscrew flip thing, I don't even know what you call it, it's kind of difficult to do. The smaller the RC, the faster it moves through the air when it's spinning. That's just how it is. The bigger RCs, like the Erevo and things like that, they flip I guess easier because they flip slower. Does that make sense? Like you just have more control over. It's kind of hard to explain. It's um, it works like that in real life too. You know, I drive a tractor trailer, and it's funny. Whenever you know people think backing a 28 foot trailer would be easier than backing a 53 foot trailer. A 53 foot trailer is actually easier to back than a 28 foot trailer because the 28 foot trailer it moves very quickly when you're making adjustments, and the bigger trailer moves very slowly. And if you're backing a small trailer, like we have these dollies that hook the 28 foot trailers together when you're backing those dollies up they just they move really really fast they're much harder to, to back up than you than you might guess they uh it's just i know it's counterintuitive but the smaller things are like that the easier it is to make mistakes and the more amplified your your movements are and those kind of things i'm not sure how to explain it but <laughs> just know that smaller rcs are a little bit more difficult to control in the air they're a little bit more difficult to flip and things like that it takes a lot more practice but the haas is a fantastic rc even though it is a smaller one and it rotates super super quick it's a lot of fun it does a lot of cool tricks a lot of cool stunts i really enjoyed the thing i hope you guys are enjoying the haas it is a really fantastic rc i hope this video has helped you guys out but uh yeah i guess that's all i got for you today guys dinner time is coming up soon and we got it's taco night can't wait to get some tacos the in-laws are in so we're gonna have a big family taco dinner and things like that so i, I really hope this video has helped you guys out i, I had a, a blast making it's a lot of fun i hope it's educational for you i hope you guys go out and try some of these tricks and get these stunts down pat and you guys are just flipping and and doing all these and everything else like I am. I want people to enjoy the Haas as much as I enjoy it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Like the video if you like it, share it. I appreciate it so much. We are over 10,000 subscribers. I'm so excited. Uh, it was a really big deal. I uh, Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, 10,000. That is, that's, that's so crazy to me. I, I just, I can't thank you guys enough. It really means a lot to me. I didn't know the channel was ever going to get to 10,000 subscribers. subscribers. <laughs> thank you guys so much. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. I will see you guys later.